You're now listening to All Hog Sports. Covering all Arkansas Razorback sports, such as football, basketball, baseball, and much more. Now, here's your host for today's show, Sam Stimson. The Hogs advanced in the Fayetteville Regional this weekend, defeating Nebraska twice in basically a three-game series. But I'm starting at closest games, then to the furthest. Starting off Game 7, Arkansas won 6-2. to two. And we're just going to cut right to the chase. Bottom of the eighth, Charlie Welch, bases loaded. The pitcher has thrown eight balls in a row. So he throws one more, and then a wild pitch happens. Arkansas takes the lead 3-2. He goes to Dave Van Horn and looks at him. Because obviously after a wild pitch, a pitcher is more likely to throw a strike. That's usually how it works, because they don't want another run to score off of a wild pitch. He looked to Van Horn, and Van Horn gave him the signal to swing. And Charlie Welch, one swing, and obliterated the ball. I'm pretty sure it's still in the air as I'm recording this on Tuesday. I mean, he crushed it, and Baum Walker exploded. And I have a feeling that this is one of the those moments that you remember forever. Like, if you were there like I was, you're going to be like, I was there when Charlie Welch hit the goal red home run in 2021. And Dave Van Horn, who's been here at Arkansas for so many years, said that's the loudest moment he's ever seen Baum Stadium. I mean, it was absolutely electrifying. Now, I think also a part of this was DVH decision-making in this moment was so clutch. Before the game, he put Welch off of the DH spot because he was 2 for 11 there on the weekend and opted to use him as a pinch hitter instead. So when he saw bases reloaded, Smith was up, he put Welch into pinch hit, bottom of the eighth, bases loaded, two outs, 2-0 count. He gave him the go to hit the homer, and Welch just absolutely smashed it. And that's the reason that Dave Van Horn is your SEC Coach of the Year and probably National Coach of the Year. We have to see how the rest of the season pans out. But just his decision-making was so key in this series. And, you know, I, I kind of see a lot of people that... Um, you know, they question a lot of stuff for coaching. That's just any sports. But Davian Horn, don't question him. He's always going to get it right. I mean, this was just a legendary moment. And it was absolutely awesome to see that crowd at Baumwalker because it didn't even happen last year. You know, around this time, we were just sitting around. There was no baseball to watch. And that was just awesome. The whole weekend was awesome. And if you were there or you saw it on TV, you know that that crowd was electrifying. That's the best fans in baseball. I'm not even talking best fans college baseball. I think Arkansas has the best fans in baseball, period. I mean, that atmosphere is untouched anywhere else. And then Kevin Copps, man. Give him the golden spikes now. Over the weekend, he pitched 13.1 innings, giving up zero earned runs. 185 pitches. 15 strikeouts and 6 hits. Over the weekend, he passed a mark, and he has a 100 more strikeouts than walks. I mean, that's just crazy stuff. They gave him the tournament MVP for the Fayetteville Regional, obviously. And he said himself, the more he throws, the better he feels. And, you know, I think a lot of people see the pitch here and go high and they worry about it. But, you know, Matt Hobbs and Dave Horn and Cobbs himself both know his workload and what he's able to do. So I'm not too worried at all, actually. I'm not worried at all about his arm. I'll just say it that way. He said he's good. He's good. I mean, and that was just an incredible moment. He goes in at the third inning when Wiggins gets two batters on base. Um, they, You know, he helps get out of that jam a couple runs at score. And then he also pitches the rest of the game. I mean, that's just incredible. And he's just such a peak athlete. I mean, maybe it might, might be the beet juice. Who knows? Also, that last home run from Charlie Welch went over Mojo, who Arkansas fans did not like this week in the left fielder for Nebraska. Now, also in that game, I wanted to talk about Christian Franklin's at bath in the 8th. He was down 0-2, two outs. And he really just kept sawing away at the cut. You know, every single time he got a strike, he fouled it off. Um, He worked the count to 3-2 and then got on base and was one of those runs that scored um, to take the lead. And, you know, just a guy like that who's obviously a 5 tool guy going to be in the MLB draft. Impressive stuff from him in that moment. You know, Wiggins looked pretty good, but in that third inning, he kind of struggled to 
find the zone and was giving up a lot of walks. So obviously Dave Van Horn called the cops and it went out pretty well. Casey Opitz and Robert Moore also hit two at Dingers, two tied up 2-2. Two, two. And we've been swinging for the fences a lot, but I'm not really too worried about not being able to play small ball because they've been able to do it past. Just what a game. I mean, we got to the Nebraska bullpen pretty early, and they were just going through pitchers. They had five pitchers in that game, and in comparison, they had five pitchers in total on Sunday in two games. So that just shows you how much uh, NJIT and Arkansas kind of struggled on Saturday, I mean Sunday, but they got back in track on Monday. Arkansas took down Nebraska and is moving on. Also, zero errors in this game, which was very important. Now, the last two College World Series appearances in 2018 and 2019, Arkansas finished their regional on Sunday. And they did not this year. On Sunday, they lost 5-3. to Lockhart struggled towards the end of his outing in the fifth inning. However, there was a solid performance from Kostu and Nolan to finish the game. Just couldn't get the bats going. You know, I thought there was a chance we may take the lead in the ninth, but, um, you know, two guys on, two outs, and there was a pop fly, and the game was over then. Four hits on 31 at-bats was a struggle. Obviously, three runs, though. Um, Two of those runs came off a pitching error. And just, you know, game-recognized game. Schwellenbach for Nebraska had an absolute amazing pitching performance. He's a double player. He plays shortstop as well. Um, And the thing is, both teams won when their best reliever pitched a lot of innings. Every single game Arkansas won this weekend, Cops pitched. When Nebraska beat Arkansas, Schwellenbach pitched. So, two elite relievers in those situations. You know, Schwellenbach's being looked at scouts along with Cops. Um, You know, whenever they pitch those guys, they won. That's just how key bullpen guys are. And Arkansas obviously saved Cops and didn't pitch him on Sunday. They too pitch him on Monday for that electrifying performance. Errors were also very costly as well. Three of them, that's nothing like this Razorback defense. Only five walks this game. It just came down to the bats not waking up, and Schwellenbach had a fantastic day on the mound for Nebraska. At Game 4 on Saturday, Arkansas won 5-1. to one. Goodhart started things off with a blast in the bottom of the first inning, giving us the momentum, and Arkansas kept that momentum until the final pitch of the ninth inning. That home run was also the 99th home run of the season. You say, oh, why 99? Well, 99 is the season record for home runs in Razorback history at the time. However, there's been a lot more added onto that list now. I think we're at 102. It's probably going to keep going up at the Super Regionals. Probably going to keep going up at Omaha because this team, power hitters all through the lineup, six guys over 12 home runs. That's just an incredible number in its own. Um, but yeah, Goodhart hit that bomb. They carried the momentum. And we're going to win a lot of games with Wicklander and Cops. That's just simple math. I mean, you got your lefty ace in Wicklander who's quietly putting up one of the best for performances in the SEC and NCAA. Um, you know, below 2 ERA. Looked really sharp over the weekend. In with Wicklander and Cops on the mound. One run, five hits, two walks, and 13 strikeouts. Wicklander got the win. The save went to Cops. It's good to see Goodhart. He broke out of a slump with two hits. And then Webb looked pretty good as well. He had two hits as well. It's a pretty solid game all around. Not much to talk about because the offense did its job. But pitching was outstanding. It's just one of those days where the Hogs took care of business. And we packed our bags, went in a ball marker, and did what the number one team does, and left. I mean, that's like a super regional type game. And I think this series against Nebraska and Arkansas really should have been a super regional. You know, I said on my podcast last episode that I don't think Arkansas got screwed by playing Nebraska. And I still think that's right. Because Arkansas obviously has hopes to be the national champion as they're still the favorite in many sports books. However, I think Nebraska got screwed here. It's not fair for them to send them down to Fayetteville. And whether they got screwed by the NCAA or the Big Ten because they didn't have any non-conference games is tough to tell. But they shouldn't have been at this Fayetteville Regional. I mean, they were an outstanding team. They fought, you know, for almost 27 innings in the whole thing. Maybe not as much in this game four. And that was all for the Arkansas-Nebraska series, by the way. Those teams played three times. Arkansas took two out of three of the weekend. Ten in Owen SEC play won a series at LA Tech, swept the SEC tournament, and then obviously the regional, we went 3-1 and one and won that, I guess, series against Nebraska because you played three games there. 
But, you know, just hats off to Nebraska. They had a lot of good pitching. Povic, Perry, um, Schwellenbach as well. Um, you know, they came to Baum Walker and, not going to lie, surprised me a little bit. They had a fantastic game. And another team that also surprised me would be NJIT. Arkansas beat them 13-8. However, that's not the main storyline here. Hats off to these guys, though. First NCAA tournament ever. Come down to Fayetteville. You're used to, like, I guess 70 people probably at their ballpark, 70, 80. And then you come to Baum Walker, and you have 11,000 people cheering you on, um, you know, when you come down to the hog pin. That was just awesome to see. Um, you know, it was a big crowd for them. Playing under the big lights was something that they embraced in the left fielder. Uh, Mercana, I talked to him on my last podcast. He's a stud of a player, by the way. But the hog pin would be like, show us your socks. And then he'd pull up his socks. Um, I just love to see, like, guys come into these giant atmospheres down in south and embrace them. And I hope this continues because this happened in 2019 with Central Connecticut. They went to the hog pen after the game. And then this NJIT guys, they were doing shirt swaps with Arkansas guys like it was a jersey swap after the game. Um, you know, the family members of, I think, Jake Rappaport put on Twitter that they had a fantastic time here and just the baseball experience was so awesome. And it's so awesome to see that. You know, because, you know, obviously baseball and college baseball in particular is not as big in other places. However, they come down here to Arkansas and they experience it all. Just hats off to those guys, though. They put up a fantastic game against Arkansas and Northeastern to win their first ever game in the NCAA tournament. They were actually up 3 nothing in this game. Arkansas had to call the cops as well. 2.1 innings for him with 24 pitches. He got... Um, the business done and got the win as well. The bats woke up eventually with a big day from Christian Franklin. Two arrows on sloppy fielding, and it was a good game. The bats warmed up with 13 hits. But shout out to this NJIT guys. You know, you guys showed up to Fayetteville, surprised me big time, and had a fantastic time at the hog pin. Now, the all tournament team. So for catcher, you got Griffin Everett of Nebraska, first base with Luke Roskim of Nebraska. Second base, Robert Moore of Arkansas. Shortstop, you got the main, Jalen Battles. Third base, Bryce Matthews from Nebraska. In the outfield, you got two spots taken by the Hogs. Matt Goodhart, who's playing outfield this weekend for most of the series, except for the last game when he played DH. And then Christian Franklin in center field. Just a ton of web gems put on him. Um, you know, if you really have a fly ball going out there and it's contested, Franklin's going to catch it. That's just how he is. And you also got Joe Acker from Nebraska, and then DH, Charlie Welch coming up huge in that pinch hit scenario, and also was the DH for every other game except for the last one. And then starting pitchers, you got Patrick Wicklander for Arkansas, no doubter there, and then Ryan Fisher of NJIT, love to see them represented on this list. Relief pitchers is pretty easy, Kevin Copps, Spencer Schwellenbach, no shock there, same thing with the tournament MVP. Now, we host NC State on Friday for the Super Regionals. So you know the deal. Thursday morning, tomorrow, there'll be a preview of that up. Now before this show closes out, rest in peace to John McDonald, the absolute Razorback legend. He passed away at 82 years of age. At his time here at Arkansas, he had 40 national championships, greatest coach of all time, six triple crowns here at Arkansas, set up the school for success past his retirement, won 83 conference titles between the Southwestern Conference and the Southeastern Conference. Just one of the greatest coaches of all time in history of sports. And our thoughts and prayers here at All Hog Sports Podcast are with those around him at this time.